Everybody, it's Tyler here at Western New England checking in with URI winners 8085 Mojo. What a phenomenal performance they had just a short time ago. And this robot here looking incredible as well. This is one of my uh, favorite aesthetically pleasing robots, but it's very functional as well, too. We'll be going through that full note journey that they have. Lots of cool stuff to talk about on this. The under the bumper intake, how they're doing the trap, it's really cool. A lot of different cool arm positional movements. And we'll be going also through into their limelight as well. So let's learn more about the scene coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Jonathan, let's start off with that under the bumper intake that you're doing on there. A lot of cool stuff going on. Talk to me more about the design and then we're going to go into your shooter as well. All right, so our under bumper intake has three wheels with different different uh, types of plastic, different types of rubber. The green wheels has a softest type of rubber to grab notes, and the blue wheels behind have a harder rubber to make the note slide into the shooter way easier. How our shooter works is that there's two feeding motors, and so when the intake intakes a motor, the wheels will push it up, and when this, these sensors sense that there's a note, it'll push it back so it's not touching our main shooter motors. And once the robot is in position, the reason we don't want the note touching these shooter motors is so they can get to speed and so we can shoot with more power. So let's let's break this down a little bit more on your under the bumper intake that you have. Does that just transfer right into your shooter right away or how does that process work for the note? So before we intake a note, we bring our shooter down and one second from the ground, the note will go straight through our intake right into our shooter and then we're off to go score. So it's always transferring first before you go to score, right? It's not like it's staying underneath and then transferring? Yeah, it's, it's going straight it's, in? Right, right into the shooter. Very cool on that. And then, uh, you know, looking at your shooters, well, did you make any big modifications uh, throughout the season so far in either like your wheel config or the structure or anything like that? Uh, two main things that we changed, that we added weight to our shooter motors so that it has more inertia. So when we shoot a motor, the wheels don't lose as much speed. Also, one thing we switched was part of our shooter kept breaking because the plastic was too weak, so we changed it to a stronger type of plastic. Very cool. As we continue on this row here, lots to cover uh, for that. Uh, Joe, talk to me about this uh, double jointed arm that you have on there. Uh, you know, we haven't seen too many of these, honestly, for Crescendo, so I'd love to hear more about why did your team go this process and uh, if we can demonstrate it as how it works too. Yeah, of course. So um, a big feature of our robot this year is our double jointed arm. So it helps with a lot of things to start. Uh, we wanted to accomplish certain specific tasks at the start of the season, so I built a robot with those in mind. Uh, some of those included being able to score from the speaker in multiple positions and to be able to trap score. So this double jointed arm helps us out a ton with that. So to start, um, it allows us to intake directly into our shooter, which helps us um, just throughout the matches. Um, specifically. Our double jointed arm helps us that way we can shoot from the subwoofer shot, we can do the podium shot, and we can amp all together. So it really allows us to be more versatile and more useful to our Alliance members. Um, can, can we see what a couple of those shots look like and kind of yeah, narrate, yeah. narrate it for me? And then our subwoofer shot. And then an interesting part about our double jointed arm allows us to do a behind the back subwoofer shot in case the situation uh, requires so. And then additionally, uh, it helps us with the climb. So our climbing sequence, uh, we are able to lift the shooter out of the way. And then these are climbing hooks. Just pop down onto the chain. Uh, yeah. We can lift up our arm, this part of our arm, and then our shooter is still in line with the uh, speaker shot. So it's very helpful for so, us. So you're able to get over this uh, little pool that we have here, right? Essentially. <laughs> yeah. Very cool, Matt. I, I love that the thought process of being, hey, let's get over blockers because we're starting to see more and more of them on the field. I think that's great so far. Yeah. We talked a little bit about climbers, but I'd like to have Gavin go a little bit more uh, into how that process works and let's showcase the hooks you have. It's a cool system. So uh, talk about how that works and then uh, seeing you scoring on the trap as well, too. Let's talk about that whole process. Thanks. So from the beginning of the season, we knew that the trap was going to be one of our main priorities. 
And we really wanted to design our robot around being capable of doing the trap because we knew that's how we were going to get the ranking points we needed to um, seed first and get the alliances that we wanted. And so um, we really kept in mind that we wanted a really uh, a good uh, climber system. And our first iteration of the climber system was a climber in the box kind of system with different stages. But we realized that with the double jointed arm we have, we wouldn't be able to get the shooter high enough to shoot into the trap using a double jointed or sorry, a climber in the box system because the hooks would not be able to get low enough. So we decided to, and I'm just gonna bring the robot arm up here. We decided to design these hooks right here and put them inside of the arms and use a winch right here to um, bring the hooks as far down into the robot base as possible because we wanted to make sure that the robot could get high enough so that the shooter was able to angle down, or not angle down, sorry, angle up and shoot into the trap. So I can show you how that looks here. The, um, this would be our trap approach position and then our driver would put it into a, another position where the hooks are a little bit higher so that it can climb the wall easier. And then we'd bring the hooks down. Or sorry, the hooks won't go down on this side. Yeah. That. That's the uh, second trap position. And then you bring the hooks down. They would drop down onto the chain and latch on. And then you would keep winching up and then you would go to the third trap position, which is right there. And you see that the wheels start shooting, spinning at a uh, shorter speed and the hooks right here, the, the well, we call them fangs, um, go into the trap once it gets high enough. And then this can shoot right up into the gap between the trap door and the superstructure part of the trap and falls into the trap. Um, and after our first competition, we had a couple different issues with the trap. And so we designed parts like this 3D printed part right here um, to help the notes slide into the trap instead of falling back into the shooter. We also redesigned the fangs here so that they'd more easily slide into the, the trap. And we designed guards here so that these pulleys wouldn't be um, eating away at the trap um, when it's up in the trap position. Last thing so, I just want to ask you with these hooks on here, when you go like with a hook and wind system, sometimes it's very one and done on that. Has right. your team had any complications in regards to like missing a climb or anything at all? So we've not yet missed a climb. There have been situations where um, if the hooks aren't in, the hooks can go in, because the winches are beneath some of our wiring and uh, superstructure. So the hooks can like get pulled in and pull the winches out of the robot. Um, and that breaks things. But um, we've only had that happen once and we haven't missed a climb once, so. Yeah, let's wrap up on this robot. Talk about yep. your uh, limelight uh, that you're doing as well. Uh, how you're getting uh, vision uh, and any feedback you're getting as well too on that. All right. So um, throughout the season, one of my favorite things was being on the part of the coding team, and one of our biggest values was actually uh, allowing the drive team to uh, have as much control to the robot as possible and making it as easy as possible for them. And so uh, one of the things that uh, let us or allowed us to do that was the limelight. And so the limelight is a camera that has a lot of cool libraries and lets us automatically uh, use and see uh, the April tags in the field. And by using these April tags, which are similar to QR codes, we can uh, use like an auto aim and it's very, it makes it really easy for the drivers to just easily aim towards right where the subwoofer is. So for example, if we're going for our subwoofer shot, the limelight will take the distance from the, the offset from the middle of the limelight to the where the April tag is, and then it can uh, rotate until that live light or the able tag is in the center. Um, we also used the volume of the uh, the able tag covers on the limelight to actually uh, find the distance that we would be shooting at, and then from there we could then lift the arm or lower the arm, which is which uh, makes or allows us to shoot from basically anywhere on the field. Uh, another thing we did for the drivers is we added a rumble which is basically a vibration to the controllers since uh, whenever we intake, uh, some of the, driver, or the drivers sometimes could have trouble uh, knowing if we intake the note since we actually, it's tough to see when it's facing the opposite direction. So one thing we actually did was uh, we made, it, made the controller rumble after we intake. And this would allow the driver to know if we intake the note and this would make for a faster cycle time. Last thing I just want to ask you, uh, any uh, future changes you're looking at making from a software side as you look at like district championships, that sort of thing? So uh, if you could look at the back here, we have uh, we have a camera which is uh, going to be replaced with a limelight soon. 
and we're looking at making a uh, note detection system. So whenever we see a note, since it's difficult to see the note from the back far away from the field, you can uh, click a button and it would automatically rotate and pick up the note. And then from there, you can then uh, move to the subwoofer and shoot, as we've been doing. Well, Mojo, congratulations on a great season so far. We can't wait to see how you do here at Western New England, at DCMP, and hopefully even beyond. So thanks a lot and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.